welcome to this tutorial we are doing today on cell mitosis and cytokinesis with a focus on our first phase of mitosis called prophase. So before we get started here on mitosis, let's talk about the daily lives of our cells. And if you're watching this tutorial, you probably already know that cells aren't always dividing and most of the time they're just going about their daily business, doing what they need to do to survive and support your body. So I'm just drawing up a couple of cells here, just all grouped together, going about their daily life. So I'll write that down here, daily life. And depending on what your cells are doing at any particular point in time, we can say that it's in a specific part of the cell cycle. And I've got this diagram here just to highlight the cell cycle. And we'll focus on the whole cell cycle more in another video, but just for now, know that it's divided into phases. So we have these phases G1, S, G2, and M. And collectively, our G1, S, and G2 phases are going to be called interphase. And you can split your cell cycle into either interphase or the mitotic phase, but just for now, all you need to know about interphase is that in G1, we just have our growth and regular maintenance of the cell. In the S phase, we have synthesis of new DNA. And in G2, we have more our growth and regulation and just preparation for mitosis. So once more, just growth synthesis of new DNA in the S phase that we're going to use in mitosis, G2 growth and preparation for mitosis, and then the M phase. And our M phase we're going to split into different parts. We're going to split it into four parts for mitosis and a fifth part for cytokinesis. Now that's all part of the M phase or mitotic phase. So I'll just write that quickly up here as well. Our M phase or mitotic phase is going to include mitosis and cytokinesis, but don't get mitosis and cytokinesis confused as all the one thing. They're separate steps, but both included in the M phase. Now our mitotic phase the mitosis part of it, we're going to split into prophase, which is the first step, metaphase, our second step, anaphase, our third step, and telophase, our fourth step. And then lastly, we'll have cytokinesis in the second stage of the M or mitotic phase. So the first thing we can note down is that mitosis itself has four steps, four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And we're going to talk about prophase now. So we've got our cell here with its lipid bilayer and a nucleus on the inside. And although we can't see it yet, this cell is ready to begin mitosis and it's going to start with prophase. So this first step here. And one of the first things that's going to happen is that your nuclear chromatin is going to begin to condense. And when your cell is going about its regular activity, the chromatin is not condensed because we need access to that DNA for transcription. But as we begin mitosis, we need to start to package all that material up so that we can effectively divide it later. And when we condense it, we call the structure it condenses into sister chromatids. So in S phase we'll replicate our DNA and then in prophase we're going to condense it into this structure here called sister chromatids. And these sister chromatids are going to be uh, joined in the middle by this yellow structure I've just highlighted here called a centromere. So during our S phase of interphase, all of our chromosomes replicated themselves, so made identical copies of themselves. And now that we're in prophase, those copies B 
begin to condense and we can see one copy alongside the other condensing and connecting at the centromere. The next thing we'll see happen during prophase of mitosis is that our nucleolus within the nucleus is going to disappear. So we have this nucleolus in here which is a non-membrane enclosed uh, dense structure that's going to be responsible for ribosome synthesis. So we have this dense structure within our nucleus here that's usually responsible for ribosome synthesis and that's our nucleolus. And as we begin a prophase, that's going to disperse, so it'll disappear. So I've just had it disappear right there. But that's not all that's going on. Outside of our nucleus, we are going to start to see our centrosomes separate from each other. So we have these uh, small structures within your cells called centrosomes, which are made of two individual centrioles arranged at right angles to each other like this. So we have two centrioles arranged at a right angle to form a centrosome. And your centrosome is usually going to be responsible for anchoring the uh, cytoskeleton or the microtubules of your cytoskeleton and also creating or constructing new microtubules. So we can see a few microtubules here. And in prophase, we're going to have the centrosomes push away from each other. So we can see they're starting to move apart. And I'll just draw this line here to show. We've got microtubules now starting to uh, meet up at a central point. And as those microtubules meet up and begin to push on each other, they're going to start to form something called the mitotic spindle. And the mitotic spindle is going to continue to push these centrosomes away from each other. So we have formation of an early mitotic spindle. And I'll just point out something as well, that these microtubules form in an aster formation. Aster meaning a star formation. And I'll show that up on the screen here as well. So this mitotic spindle is going to be expanding or extending in all directions. So it's going to look a little bit like a star. So that's what we call our aster formation of the microtubules. So you can probably start to agree with me here that a lot is going on already for our first step in mitosis. Our chromatin has condensed into chromatids, our, our nucleolus has disappeared, and we've started to form this strange looking thing called a mitotic spindle. But that's not all that's going to happen. Our mitotic spindle is also going to play a huge role in the coming phases and still has more work to do before we finish prophase. And don't worry, everything inside your cell doesn't mysteriously disappear at this point in prophase. I've just cleared everything inside the cell to show you what's happening. And although I've still got nucleus written there, at this point our nuclear envelope is going to fragment. So the layer or the membrane that we have around our nucleus is going to dissipate and that's going to result in our chromosomes being able to just uh, float around the cell. But they don't just float around the cell. What's going to happen is that mitotic spindle is going to connect to the centromere of your chromosomes. And it's going to connect at a point in that centromere called the kinetochore. And we can see that those centrosomes have pushed each other so far away now that they're completely at opposite poles of your cell. So opposite ends of your cell and we'll call the microtubules that are going to be connected to your chromosomes kinetochore microtubules. And what they're going to be doing is pulling each other in opposite directions like this, not heavily, just trying to line these chromosomes up. So if we have an equator of our cell, these kinetochore microtubules are going to slowly line up your chromosomes. So I've just said that our centrosomes have pushed each other toward the opposite poles of the cell, but also said that our kinetochore microtubules are softly pulling on their attachment points at the centromere to slowly get these chromosomes toward the equator or midline of our cell. So 
how can the microtubules of our mitotic spindle push and pull at the same time? That makes no sense at all, right? Well, the reason for that is that the kinetochore microtubules are not the only microtubules extending from our mitotic spindle. We also have many more called your polar microtubules, and I've just shown them up here in blue. And the polar microtubules are going to be responsible for the continued separation of the centrosomes. So these ones are still pushing each other away, so pushing the poles apart in your cell. And with that, we've finally got to the end of what's going on in our cell in prophase of mitosis. So we finished prophase, and I know that's a lot of information to chew on all at once, so watch the video a few times if you need to revise what's going on. And in the next video, we'll start what's happening at metaphase. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.